Okay, so ever since smartwatches first gained popularity, think original Apple Watch, they all shared one common problem, the battery life. People love Galaxy watches and Apple watches and, and other Wear OS watches, but they all have about a one to maybe three day battery life at best. And when they died, you're left with a black screen. Not a very good look. But even while they were charged, many people weren't really that fond of their look. If you're gonna wear a suit, wearing an Apple Watch might look a little bit tacky. And thus, hybrid smartwatches became a thing. For those who wanted a long battery life, a classier and less techy design, and a nice style even when the battery dies, there are hybrid smartwatches. With analog hands on the outside and a display underneath, you seemingly get the best of both worlds. But until now, you kind of didn't. You see, the input for hybrid watches has always been limited to pretty much just buttons, or maybe in the case of Garmin, a very, very low end touchscreen that just allows simple swipe gestures. But because of this, the features were really limited too. But Fossil's new Gen 6 hybrid smartwatch claims to have a solution to that. You see, Fossil added a friendly little voice assistant named Alexa. You might've heard of her. And this infinitely increases the watch's capabilities from setting timers to asking about the weather or even asking it who the 10th president was. This watch can now become a truly smart watch. Hey, for anyone new here, my name's Mike, and this right here is the Fossil Gen 6 Hybrid Smartwatch. Probably one of the most exciting hybrid watches of the year, and as I said, this watch has, well, I'll just call her Alex so I don't set yours off at home, but it has Alex on it. And so now we can actually get incredible functionality out of a hybrid smartwatch. But before I get into the interface and testing the heart rate and testing Amazon Alex, I wanna dial it back and talk a little bit more about the physical design. So the physical design, of course, is going to be one of the main reasons people buy this watch. It, it really does look pretty great. And there are a couple different styles. There's a larger version and a smaller version, probably more of a masculine and feminine one. And with those, you're going to get a couple different colors for each of them. This one is the larger and it is a brown version. So it's kind of hard to tell on camera, but the actual watch face is brown. And so the text on the, on the, on the screen, it's an e-ink display. It's kind of like a, a light brown and a dark brown instead of like a black and white. I think it looks really good. It blends in really well with the, the bezel all the way around with the tick marks. And it comes with a leather strap right here, but it's not really just a leather strap. It's actually a silicone strap on the inside uh, with some leather sewn on the outside. It says genuine leather and it does feel, and I think it looks pretty nice as well, but you're still getting that silicone interior. So you're gonna be all set for water and durability and things like that. Now the watch itself has a nice ridged bezel all the way around. On the right side, we've got three buttons. The middle one looks like a crown, but it doesn't actually rotate. And these three buttons, well, I'll dive into what they do in the interface tour, but you can just single press them or press and hold them if you want to. And on the left side, we have our microphone. That's how you can actually communicate with Amazon Alex, of course. And flipping over to the back side of the watch, you can see the straps are 24 millimeters. And you can see we have a very familiar cluster in the middle with the two concentric rings, very similar to the Fossil Gen 6 full smartwatch, not hybrid. And we've got a very similar heart rate sensor in here, as well as a blood oxygen sensor. I'll test those out in just a second. But let's talk a little bit more about the, the, the screen, the display itself. So the display, as I said, is kind of like a sepia, kind of like it's brown and, and light brown. I find it's actually really easy to read in bright daylight. The camera was catching a lot of glare from the glass on the outside, but I found, unlike a lot of smartwatches, which you can still see in bright daylight, this actually gets more visible when it's brighter out, right? Because it is an e-ink display, a lot like an old Kindle or something like that. Now the refresh rate on there is not the fastest ever. It's gonna kind of flash white and then go back to what you want, but it's fast enough that you're able to navigate around and do stuff. And in addition to that, Fossil really utilizes the analog hands. So they're not just in the way and they're not just out of the way either, but rather they're very useful when you're navigating the interface. So for example, if I just press the middle button on the right, it's gonna bring me into all the different apps and features we have here. And it uses the two hands to point to whatever my selection is. So if I go up to, uh, we can see right there notifications, we've got Amazon Alex, it'll bring the hands around and they're in line to point at whatever option I'm actually selecting right now. So for example, if I really wanna go down to notifications, I can press the middle button now, it'll show me what notifications I have on my phone and we can just go down cycling through these. We can see I missed a call. We can see Messenger on there. We can see basically whatever app you have for a notification, it's gonna tell you what it is on the top and on the bottom, it's actually going to tell you what the notification is. And you can cycle through these, you can clear them. 
or I could just go back to home right now. From what I can tell, the watch doesn't have a speaker or a beeper, but it does have a vibration haptic motor on there so you can feel your notifications. And from what I can tell, you can't actually do any kind of quick reply. So that seems to be a little bit of a drawback there. But what you can do, and I think this is really cool, going back to the watch face, you can actually change the watch face within the Fossil app on your phone. And this allows you to change it to really whatever you want. It allows you to customize where the little widgets are with the, the time. Of course, you can have the heart rate, you can have your blood oxygen, the date, whatever you want. There's a lot of options. Or you can just have a photo as the background, which I was very, very impressed by how good this actually looked. Now, it's not perfect, of course. It's, it's an e-ink display pretty low resolution, but I was still really impressed with how this looks. And the best thing is this requires essentially no energy. So once you have the watch face set, it's not going to draw a lot of power, not like an always on display for a typical smartwatch. And that was a huge positive for this. But getting back to the interface, if we press the middle button, you can press the top and bottom button to cycle through this. And so if I go up, you see notifications, we have Amazon Alex, we have uh, music control. So if I press the middle button to select that, it shows me what song's playing right now. I can actually pause it or I can continue playing it with the top button. And then the bottom button brings me into another option right here where I can either go to volume up or volume down and I can press and hold the top or bottom to skip forward or back a song. So really all the music controls that you would really need. Now, if we press the middle button, that brings us back. If we press it again, it brings us home. And I'm gonna press it one more time to go back into those apps. Now, in those apps, we can go through them and you'll see we also have Find My Phone, we have Weather, and you actually can go all the way around full circle here. But if you go to Find My Phone, it'll just obviously ring your phone. If we go to Weather, you can open that up and it's gonna load that for a second. You could also ask Amazon Alex for the weather, but the weather app is a little bit more detailed in my opinion, and it can show you things like the temperature and, and today's forecast and stuff like that. Additionally, if we go down to the bottom, we have settings. We also have your, uh, your wellness, which has three options in here. You can measure your heart rate, you can measure your blood oxygen, or you can see a snapshot of today, which kind of breaks down like how much you slept and, and how many steps you took, all the basics of what you'd really think to see in something like this. Going down, we can actually start a workout. There are quite a few different workouts you can choose from here, far more than I would really need for a hybrid watch like this. Now, it doesn't have GPS, but you can use your phone's GPS to track your workouts. And of course, this has heart rate and a, a, a pedometer on there, so you can track your steps as well. But for some pretty basic workouts, if it's on your lunch hour, you're going for a jog or a bike ride or a walk, this is absolutely perfect. We also have a stopwatch and a timer, but you can actually set those with Amazon Alex. So if I go back to home, of course, the bottom button right now, you can customize and to do whatever you want. So if I press it once, it'll go and show me notifications. But the top button I have set for Amazon Alex. So I could just say, set a 10 minute timer with Fossil. And there it says Fossil timer 10 minutes starting now. And it brings me over to the timer app. So you can use the voice assistant to navigate within this watch, including starting workouts, starting timers, things like that. I'm gonna pause this timer so it doesn't go off in 10 minutes. And that's a big positive. I really like that functionality. But you also have the ability to use Amazon Alex for a wide range of other things as well. So not just controlling this watch, but for example, what is the square root of pi? And she'll tell us that the square root of pi is 1.7724539, right? You probably already knew that, of course, but you know, it's nice that she does that as well. And so as long as your phone's around, you're getting a lot of functionality. You can ask about the weather in different countries, time zones, whatever, all the usual Amazon Alex stuff, but there are a few limitations. Things where Amazon would normally kick into like a podcast, for example, can get a little bit weird. So if you ask her what the news is, it just says, this is the news. So I, I don't really, maybe, I don't know. That's a small drawback. And another cool feature, if for example, the watch hand is covering some information you wanna see, like your heart rate, you can flick your wrist twice like that. It'll cycle the hands all the way around. And while they're moving, of course, it opens it up and you can see what the information was. And of course, if you dive into settings, you can change a couple of things, including enabling a do not disturb mode. But a lot of the reason people like to buy smartwatches or hybrid smartwatches is to keep tabs on their health. And you can only do this if it's actually accurate. So let's get into an accuracy test for the heart rate sensor on here. I went for run with this and let's see what the results actually looked like. So to test out the accuracy, I went for a run. But unfortunately, the Fossil app doesn't make it easy to see the analytics from your workout. So the best we can do right now is look at the average heart rate of 163 beats per minute and the max of 181. Now, if we go over to the Polar H 10 heart rate strap, we can see 165 and 183. So about two beats per minute higher, which overall is pretty consistent for a fitness tracker. However, without an actual graph, we can't be sure how accurate this actually is. 
The one drawback I faced with this watch is the same drawback I faced with previous fossil hybrid watches, and that is they're so good at saving energy that sometimes the connectivity is not the best. And so if I leave my phone behind and I come back, it doesn't always reconnect to my phone right away. And sometimes you have to open the fossil app and, and kind of refresh things. But once you open the app, it's pretty easy to get connected again. Now, when I review watches, I don't always show you a lot about the app, but I wanted to show you this one. So the fossil app, if you click on wellness or tap on wellness, it shows you, you know, some basic stuff. You can dive into that. But what I think is really cool is if, if you actually tap on the watch, you can really customize it. So you see all these different designs, the custom ones that actually allow you to have an image on there. Like for example, just me and my groomsmen for my wedding, you can have that and it looks surprisingly good or you can customize little icons. I can add a cactus on there, for example. I can have different designs if it's light or if it's dark. You really do have a lot of options. So that's my take on the Fossil Gen 6 hybrid smartwatch. I've always loved hybrid watches and this one is no exception. I love the long battery life at two weeks. I love the design of this. It is a little bit on the heavy side. I wish it was slightly smaller, I'll, I'll say that, but I love the aesthetic and the design overall of this watch. And of course, adding Amazon Alex on there, in my opinion, really brings you a lot of extra functionality to do a lot more that you can't normally do on a hybrid smartwatch. So leave a comment below and let me know what you think about this watch. If you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing. I'm Mike O'Brien. Thanks for watching. See you next time.